Namaste, everyone. This is Rihanna, and on behalf of everyone here at Apart But Not Alone, I'd like to welcome you all. Last week, Paul got us deeper into drawing our mandala, and we are going to pick up right where we left. We want to thank all of you who shared their beautiful art with us during and after the class. Mrs. Kamran will bring, begin the session with a short root chakra meditation. Over to you, Mrs. Kamran. Thank you, Rihanna. Welcome, everybody. Mandalas have so many meanings, but the design of your mandala is meant to be intuitive and aesthetically pleasing so that it absorbs the mind in such a way that no unpleasant thoughts can permeate its peaceful and spiritual essence. And hence, for achieving that, we will be doing a root chakra meditation today. Let us start by remembering our gurus. Please join your hands in prayer position. Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo, Maheshwaraha, Guru Sakshat, Par Brahma, Tasme Shri Guru Namaha. Please sit in a comfortable position, closing your eyes or having a soft gaze. Bring your awareness to the breath. Notice the rise and fall of the chest, the natural rhythm of breathing. If you find your thoughts wandering, gentle, just gently come back to this meditation. Seeing your thoughts, be like clouds flying away in the sky. Thoughts are okay. Let them come. Welcome them and let them go. Bring your attention to the root of your being, the base of your spine. Visualize a tiny ball of red energy spinning over there. See this energy center or this energy ball the size of a pin. On your next breath, breathe deeply into this red pin, allowing it to grow into a size of a marble. With another breath, expand this light to be a little bigger. As you breathe in deeply, it envelops your lower body. And now send this red light down to your feet. This light, this energy allows you to become rooted, to be centered. Your feet, your feet grow roots into the earth below you, centering you, connecting you to Mother Earth. As you are connected, the energy from the earth moves into your body, making you feel safe, secure and confident. As this light expands to your lower spine, sending healing energy all to your lower body. Keep breathing in deeply as your blood pumps healing energy into your entire body. Allow this red healing light move through you and around you. Now feel it moving upwards from your upper body to your upper from your lower body to your upper body. Moving upwards to your ribs, your chest, 
your shoulders, neck, face and crown. Visualize that it's moving down into your arms and your hands. Focus the light on each of your fingertips, illuminating them. And as you exhale, feel all the stress and tensions of your day-to-day -day life release into the universe, letting go of things that do not serve you anymore. Your Multhara or Root Chakra is beginning to open up. Imagine that it opens up like a flower with the petals opening outwards to greet the illumination of the sun. Imagine this ruby red light coursing through your being, then meeting with and becoming the light present within you. As you take another deep breath in and out, you go in deeper, go in within yourself, removing any inhibitions and fear and feel more grounded and centered with the strength to begin your work with more clarity. Remembering Lord Shiva, Shiva and Shakti before we start our drawings. Om Nama Shivaya. Om Nama Shivaya. Om Nama Shivaya. Slowly and gently open your eyes. Thank you so much for this meditation. Over to you, Paul. Om Namah Shivaya. Uh, good evening, or good morning, wherever you are. This is our third class, fourth class. Oh, time flies. It's the fourth class and around me, the world is coming back to normal which is a very good sign. One of the ways we do that interior is with some kind of a meditation or a mantra. And that's what we're basically doing with the mandala drawing. Even though we're doing something very simple that all people can do, you're, it's still a process of centering yourself and balancing your energies, heightening your energies and moving towards healing, calming the mind and moving towards healing. When people come to my art classes, which I taught for many, many years, they actually sit in a chair for sometimes 10 hours. Usually it's eight to 10 hours and nowhere else in life can they do that. But once you start working to, with the mandala, you move outside of time and you sit still and you can really concentrate. We've had a lot of young people from between ages of seven and 13 do the mandala workshop and the results are excellent. They do beautiful paintings and they love it. So on this evening, number four, which is the heart chakra, fourth chakra, and its color is green. I just wanna recognize that as we open our hearts to coloring. For me, doing art, art is my guru. It's my higher consciousness, it's myself, and the art that comes through me is, is my way that I found to transform myself when I'm by myself or in a group of people. So that's what we're doing here. We're working on something that's simple. It's a mantra, it's visual, and we are in the process of expanding our realm of consciousness. In this particular six week course, it's the very basic, it's the fundamental pattern of the mandala. So let's review just really briefly, um, really briefly. So remember we started off with a square and the square represents a foundation. 
And then in the square, we created a border. We found our center and we made several circles around the center. This most mandalas, not all, there's a million different ways to do it, but most mandalas incorporate this very simple uh, design. From there, we put in the eight directions that we, we, we did the two radiuses and we did the two diagonals and we, we made um, little marks from the center to the diagonal or the center to the radius. Why do we do that? We did that so we can go around the mandala and it's always equal. One thing about mandalas is they always come out when you do a mandala equal. It's very um, mathematically correct. And the math of the mandala is, and the lines of the mandala we see is masculine. The coloring and the feel and the circles are the feminine. So even if you're completely unaware of this, you're balancing your masculine and your feminine just by the fact that you're doing this. And it works whether you're coloring one in, drawing one, painting one, or looking at one, or going into a temple, like when you're in Nepal and you go into the, the temples, there, there are mandalas all the way around, they're in the ceilings. Uh, I was just talking to a friend in Beijing today and there's a place I've always wanted to go, I'm gonna get to go soon. It's called the Temple of Heaven. And when you walk inside, you look up at heaven, and what is it? It's a spectacular mandala made like 800 years ago. So this stuff has been around for a long time. So after we put the directions in, we made very simple graphics. This is as simple as we can be. We, we're calling it the open lotus mandala. It's very simple. These lotus petals, if you remember, open up. You all see that this is where we left off last time. We're going to do a couple things this time. What we're going to do is continue to color in and then we're going to make some very fundamental changes so you can see how your mandala will change. And the changes we're going to make, we're going to make it a little bit more detailed and a little bit more of an opening to go deeper inside yourself. Okay. So that what we ended off last week is we are using colors to color this in. So on the center of mine, I used yellow and, and orange to color it in. Usually the background color between the lotuses, the color between the lotuses is this color. Usually that color is a little bit darker than the lotus color. And the reason that is, is because the dark goes back and the light comes forward. So when the lotus petals are lighter, they tend to look like they're coming out at you. In Tibetan Buddhism, this is just a piece of paper, but it's actually in their philosophy, it's four different dimensions. And when you're coloring this, you're not aware of it, but you're actually operating in four different dimensions. And maybe next week or the week after that, we'll talk about that for a little bit. So I left off in my circle here, I was starting to color it in when we stopped in light blue and purple. So I'm going to go around now and I'm very quickly. So let's take like four or five minutes and just start coloring it in. Now, when I'm doing this with you, I'm going to do it very rapidly. If I was sitting at home, I would do it much slower. So you don't have to kind of keep this pace up. You can do part of it and then on your own, you can finish it. That, that would be your homework assignment. But the idea is we're going to finish these and then when we're done, we're going to look at them and based on what they are colored and how they were drawn, we can do a very in intricate soul reading on each person based on what the colors they chose and how they colored it in. So this is revealing what's going on inside of you that's focused on at the heart. So if you want to start coloring a little bit, I only colored in at the end these two blue lotuses. Can you see that I colored in the two blue lotuses? And then dark behind it. So I'm going to continue that pattern around now. I'm going to color in blue, 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 and then purple. This is the background, but these are the lotus petals. And this is the background. Okay, 
So by coloring in these light, like light blue, they come towards us. By coloring this a little bit darker, it moves back. So take a few minutes now, and I'm just gonna color it in. Now, mind you, I'm gonna do this very, very fast, and I would be doing it much slower. So even though I'm going fast, please don't try to keep up with me. Just do it slow, and you can always finish it when the class is finished. So before we move on, I'm just gonna briefly color those in. We have, uh -huh. we've gotta get in my class, okay. And one thing about your coloring, if you're coloring fast, you're coming from the mind. If you're coloring in slow, you're coming from the heart. Now, why do I say that? Because we consider the mind as masculine and the masculine thinks, you know, the word is we have 50,000 thoughts in our mind every day that has very little to do with our life. So speed or fastness is mind. The heart is much more subtle, it's slow. So when you're coloring in fast, you're doing it fairly masculine. If you slow down, the feminine is much more able to come forward on a slow pace. Plus your paintings will look better if you're working slow. So just so you know that, I'm gonna put these glasses on so I could see a little bit better. Okay, good. So I'm gonna color this in. And if you're first starting. So, um, and then we'll, res we'll reserve time at the end like we did last week to have some questions. Questions are really important. So what works for me best is if I color it in just in one direction. So right now I just colored in briefly the bl blues and in the corners of the bottom of the blues, I'm gonna darken it just a little bit. Why am I doing that? Because the dark goes back, the light comes forward. So if you color in the corners of the lotus really briefly at the bottom corners around the circle, what that does is it gives you more of a dimension. Last class, put the crystals on here. Okay, so briefly, you can look closer here. If you can see this in the bottom corners, can you see that they're a little bit darker? They're a little bit darker right here. I didn't do it too strong. See it right there, you can see that one. So that just, instead of coloring in flat, although you do that first, when you color in the corner slightly, it gives it more of dimensions. Now I'm gonna go back to the purple that I started with last time, the purple. Purple, I'm gonna go all the way around. And this is the background between the blue lotuses. You've probably heard of that before, a blue lotus. That's exactly what we're making here, a blue lotus. And the beautiful thing about colored pencils though, they're very, very easy. And it's nice to hold a pencil in your hand because nowadays we don't use pencils for much. It's all computerized. And I've seen a lot of computer mandalas and they look good on a computer, but if you print them out, they don't look very good. The computer cannot reproduce what the human hand can. And that's very, very important for artists. I have already finished coloring my mandola when I had a break. I had a break? Yes. She I'm glad you finished coloring your mandala, whoever that was that was just talking. <laughs> Dahira. Dahira. Namaste, Dahira.
these colored pencils are fantastic. Usually when you're making mandalas, it doesn't matter if you're coloring in with colored pencils or you're painting them or you're making a collage, don't go over the lines, stay inside the lines. As long as you, you can do that, especially in painting, you keep the shape really in perfect condition. If you start painting over the lines, you lose focus. Okay, so if you can see that, I've roughly colored in all the purples. And it doesn't have to be purple. This can be any color, any color that's a little darker than Lotus. If you wanna make, see we, how, we used yellow and orange. You could use yellow and orange here too. You could do whatever you want. There's no real uh, rules about color. There, there are rules about the value, just like we're talking about lighter and darker, but any color lighter and any color darker works. Now we just colored in these corners of the blue lotus is dark. So the bottom of the purple where it's pointing towards the center, we want to color that in fairly dark. Because what that will do is lift up the lotuses into from two dimensions into three dimensions. And then four dimensions is the ultimate. You can actually get, when I do, when I imagine being with me, like I was in Hawaii four times this year where we painted together for eight days. After four or five days, you get real high. You start laughing, joking, playing. You know, your face has a radiance to it and you start to have fun. And even in the middle of, this, of the whole mess of COVID and the virus, People have been coming to my workshops for over a year, and that's the number one thing they say. It's so fun to be kind of high on making mandalas. It's a great natural high. You see how I've colored in the, the darker parts here on the bottom? So it's lighter on the top and darker on the bottom. The dark goes back. So if you look at the blue lotus here, the dark is back. What, what does that mean back? There's planes in a painting from forward on backward. And so when you darken that, you go back to a plane, you're, you're starting to give your painting a depth. And when the reason you do that is because you're gonna break into three dimensional eventually. Okay, is everybody following that? It's pretty simple. I'll take a couple of minutes and let you uh, keep coloring and you know, I'll talk a little bit uh, about mandalas. One of the things that mandalas are is connected. Like if you can imagine that the group of us together tonight, let's say there's 50 people. If you can image all their hearts connected, all the hearts are connected. Whether you know about it or not, they are connected. I, I, I experience it as true all the different times. When the hearts are connected, that is what we call a living, breathing mandala. And in, in Buddhist art, especially the white Tara meditation, they connect all the hearts in the whole world. But we can just begin with, it's just us, our group together. In the morning on the first day of a workshop, that's exactly what we start to do. And we do it every morning, we connect all the hearts because once the hearts are connected, that's the mandala. And we're, we're, there's a lot of forms of mandalas, but that's one of them. The other thing before we move on here, about mandalas is they are transformers of consciousness. If I could have any of you with me for let's just say two months, in two months you could, you'd be an entirely different person. 
your consciousness would be changed and you'd have some absolutely beautiful paintings to put in a yoga center or your office or around your home. It doesn't take long. Mandala painting is not like going to school for four years to be an artist. Going, going in a class for four days can begin the process or six sessions can begin the process. So the mandala is a magic tool for changing consciousness. Okay, we're gonna move on. Time goes by so fast in these sessions. Are we looking at some? Does somebody show it? Anju. Anju, beautiful. Oh, I like your shading so much. Yeah, you're opening up. Based on that is your, your third and your fifth chakra are connecting with your heart. So Thank you're, you so much. You're, you're moving out from your heart up to your throat chakra, which is your creativity, and down to your solar plexus, which is the third chakra, which has to do with feelings. Most people in the US are located here in the third chakra, and they take it on the negative. It's not the positive. So you're expanding out. And the way you've made it, it's... Your, your, the spiral of your chakra is to the left, means that you're uh, moving out of your mind towards the feminine, and you're slowly moving towards the feminine. And I would guess in your life, moving towards the feminine could be a big change in your life. And uh, you can't get too much feminine. You know, it's, it's endless, it's ultimate, it's seamless, it's magical, it's, the, it's, a, it's way more healthier than the mind. And plus that, it's, it, it's at a much higher level of consciousness. We're not talking about divine mind. We're just talking about the regular mind. Well, thank you. So let's continue a little bit. Um, so what we're gonna do, we did a little bit of this last week. The pen. We did a little bit of this last week. So I wanna continue. See how last week we did this extra line on the outside. I want to show you how you can expand your mandalas very, very easy. Uh, and you can expand your design. So I'm going to do um, a couple of very simple maneuvers and drawing and you'll be able to see it. So if I go down here, I'm going to add another line here. Hang on one second. This pen is not cooperating. <laughs> I've got it right on my bag, Lumacolor. That's the pens I use on paintings. And here we go. So I'm gonna add a smaller Lotus. You see how simple that is? Just add another one. If any of you like that last uh, drawing I was looking at and coloring, if you feel you're, you're done, don't try to overdo it. Just either start another one now or start another one before next week. You could, you're capable of doing several in this amount of time. So if we do this, we can go around very easily and make it more detailed. And once we do that, let's just do a very simple thing. Since we, we're expanding consciousness and we're spiraling here, I'm just I gonna like, add, I like the whole thing. I'm just gonna add a wave in here. Do you see that wave right there? Wow. You can add anything in a mandala. So now I'm gonna do the next one. And the waves don't have to be exactly perfect there are ways we don't have time in this class to do it but we can make templates see the next wave so there's a lot of other things you can do besides waves i'm just doing something that's very easy see how the mandalas changed now completely so i'll go ahead
Okay. Look at how that how easy that was and look at how it changed the whole flow of the mandala. A wave is a good symbol because it means um, adding feelings, transition, and ultimate possibility like the ocean has infinite possibilities. Um, and so let's let's do another little one. Up here in this little space here, I'm going to add a new moon. I'm going to draw a new moon. And then I'm going to do it on the next one. I'm going to do a sun or a full moon. See, I put a new moon there and you can either color this in as a moon or a sun. Well, we'll get to that. So I'm going to do a sun every other one and a moon every other one. It's about balance. And they are, there, are, there are templates that you can make a perfect moon and a perfect circle sun, but we don't have time for that. We're, it's much better just to draw to see where you're at as far as drawing goes. Now it's a whole different mandala. And see in the middle, the yin and the yang, let's look at that. We, we drew that in last, we could put anything there, but look at what a difference it makes if I turn my painting like that. And most mandalas can also be as a diamond like this. They can be made as a diamond. It looks completely different as a diamond. Okay, so continuing on with the coloring in, we have a lot more things to color in now, but let's do the last thing we did. I'm gonna color in the moon and the sun. Suns pick out a yellow or an orange or some bright color. And if you wanna make these moon, full moons, then color it in blue. So I have four orange colored suns and I'm gonna color in the moon, the new moon, I'm going to color in that uh, light blue. Now you could put, once you learn how to do this, you can put anything in there. You could put a cat, a mountain, a snake, a bird, um, faces. You could do a smiling, you know, a smiling face. Or you could just do color, but it's kind of nice since we're talking about making a balanced mandala with the yin and the yang. I'm going to do this with light blue. So just in like two, three minutes, I've just made and colored in four new moons and four suns. The moon and the sun, it's in balance. If you look at the great mandalas from Tibet, there's moon and sun in almost all of them somewhere. And a lot of the, the deity paintings they do too. There's a moon on one side, a sun. It's interesting to me in our culture, the right hand is the masculine and the left hand is the feminine, although it's reversed. So if I do this, that's the right hand, that's masculine. If I do this, it's the left hand, which is feminine. Of course, I'm holding up the opposite hand so you can see that that's the left. And so, um, the moon and the sun are about balance. The moon lives here, the sun lives here. So when you're balancing a painting out, and uh, when I first started to learn this, I did paintings that specifically had to do with my state of consciousness. So I did paintings about joy, love, ecstasy, and I also did paintings about pain, suffering, some of the wounds I've had to go through in my life. And that was my way of dealing with issues it's that the mandala can handle anything like that and tie all these ends together. I recommend if you can find Joseph Campbell's six on mask with a thousand faces on the number six there, there's a whole 20 minutes where he talks about the history and the depth of mandalas. Um, maybe we'll write that or we can send it out so you can follow up. It's one of the best things I've ever uh, seen about it. So I'm going to continue coloring in now. I'm going to color in the waves. 
And waves, you can think of it either blue or green. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna color in one blue, one green, one blue, one green. But if you want to, you could color them in red. You could color it in uh, any color you want. I'm just using something that's the easiest, like a wave, I see the ocean green, I see uh, the ocean blue. And of course I was just in, on the, in the Hawaiian Islands and it was just oh, everywhere you look, there's blue and green and there's rainbows. It's, Maui is just incredible. Uh, okay, I'm gonna color in the waves now. And we're coming near the end. This is probably one of the last things we can do this week. We'll get another one underneath there. Leave it out. Thank you. Whoops. I did what you're not supposed to. I went over the line. Oh yeah, that green is beautiful. I could frame this and put it up in the bathroom. <laughs> Blue green. Now look at this, it's starting to look pretty beautiful. These can be framed. They look amazing. The very first mandala I did in, way back in the 80s, I have it framed and up in my studio. I've kept it for all time. What are we at time? Okay, so um, what do you think, Rihanna? Should we color? for the next five minutes or so we answer questions. I'll leave it up to you. Uh, I think we have enough time to color for like five minutes. Okay, good. So let's go around here. See how I've colored these green and blue? So above the wave, not right here, but on the next one up in the Lotus, I'm gonna match that. So it'll be green here and then green in here, this little narrow band green. And this one's blue, it'll be blue in here. So I'm taking that color that, that the wave is and I'm, I'm expanding it. So um, if it's possible to do that, please do it. Remember, I'm giving you the easy way through this, but if you don't have the color green, you can use another color. You can make it all blue. So the green waves have a green lotus above them. Now I'm going to color in where the blue waves are. I'm gonna, where the blue waves are, I'm going to color in the, this blue. Now we can really begin to feel the mandala. Was it, what was the lady's name that uh, held up the painting? Anju. Anju. Anju? Anju? Yes. Yes. I, know, yes. I, know, I noticed you put a glow around yours, you know, by coloring yeah. it around the sides. We, we are going to do that, but you jumped the gun. You already did it, which is great. You, you had a, um, an insight of the future. I learned it from you only. Yes. 
Well, since we had this very difficult time the last year and a half, the art business has gone up, not down. Arts become more essential. A lot of people recognize that. I've had a lot of mothers with their children homeschooling come and spend a day with me doing this for the day as part of their homeschooling. Last week, I just had a, a eight-year-old in my class and he did a very nice painting. Okay, there we are, Rihanna. That's the start of a mandala. Now Thank you can you. get Looks frames, great. very inexpensive. Maybe the last class, I'll show you what this looks like. I'll, I don't know if you can see through the glass, but I'll go look for a frame and frame this. I might put it up in my studio somewhere or in my house. Okay, is there any questions? We have a few minutes left. I can answer a few questions. Anybody have any questions? Um, hi, Paul, this is Antipa. Um, uh, Paul, I've been uh, painting uh, mandala for quite a while and uh, it's just that I don't uh, understand what my mandala wants to speak. But I just go on painting. It's like I'm in a zone and it's, it's all blurred. And you know, I go on painting and painting after 50 hours or 60 hours, I get up and I'm like, okay, uh, I have no idea that I painted this. I don't know what it means. So, um, how do I understand my mandala? Okay, so because, you're re are, you, are you ready to go down the rabbit hole? Yeah. <laughs> You've never painted one mandala. Uh, no, I have painted uh, one no. mandala. Uh, let me just show you no, no. Uh, one mandala. Yeah, show me one. Uh, just a second. Um, can you see this? This one. It was there a minute ago. Yeah, this one. Uh, can oh, you see beautiful. This one? That's gorgeous. Very Tibetan, huh? Yeah. I've painted quite the mandalas, but I, I just uh, don't understand the meaning okay, of them, like so why I'm I have gonna, painting. I'll, I'm going to tell you this in a, in, a, in a small way, and you can kind of vegetate or think about it in the time. The reason okay. we don't sign mandalas is we don't do them. We really don't. I know you think you did that, and from a yeah. thought process, you did do it, but think about this right now. The only way you can be an artist is if you go up to your mind and make a timeline back into the past. When you're looking at your paintings, you can't look at them from the past. You have to look at them from the present, from this moment. So if you look at it from this moment, from your heart, not from your mind, this painting is a portal from your soul to you. Every little color in it, every little shape and design in it is a message or a clue. It's like a dream that's coming to you. And when you just look at mandalas, you, you'll learn so much by just feeling them and not trying to make them. Rather let the mandalas, like the way the mandala teaching is in Tibet is you let the mandala paint you. And then when it's finished, you wake up. It's like you're dreaming as you're painting it. And I know from a Western mind culture, it always looks like we do it. And that's why in the West, everybody signs their paintings, but in the East, uh, they don't. Where the mandalas come from originally, nobody signs them. So that's a little bit, can you imagine looking at it right now from in the present tense? Your heart chakra is always in the presence. It can't go back. So the moment you claim to be an artist, you're moving away from your heart chakra and you're moving away from your own soul because the soul the mind uses the brain and the soul uses the heart. So when you're painting mandalas, it's, it's, you know, to understand this, you have to be out of your mind. You get that? If you're in your yeah. mind, I did this, I do this, I paint this. That's the small little world that we live in in our cultures. The bigger world is what a gift for my soul. I'm just here present. I'm just meditating with a paintbrush. And in the end, I'll wake up to the teachings of the soul. It's like you're painting and dreaming. That's the true teaching of it. Whether you can comprehend that or not at this moment, I'm not sure, but that's exactly what is happening. It's a gift from your soul. 
you're very advanced. That's a very, very beautiful mandala. Thank you. Thank you so that, much. What, what, what's it done with? Uh, I did it on canvas with acrylic paint. Acrylic paint? Yeah. I don't see crystals on it. Where's, yeah. the, where's the crystals? How, where's the 3D? Is that 3D paint? Are your lines done with 3D? No. Yeah, a bit over here. Over here, I did the shading. Yeah. Uh, I, somewhere. And I did POP over here. I used it to uplift the work over here, if you can see. Yeah, I can see it. Yep, that's 3D puff paint. I use I buy it by the cases. Yeah, yeah. And I did a little uh, golden lining here as, you know, a protection from the universe. I always had that in my mind. Yeah. The golden lining, it's always well, there. One of the things we're going to do on the sixth class is I'm going to take you on a five-minute tour of my house. And you'll see, I don't know, I've got mandalas and paintings all over, including some that took me that's a tree of life that's very beautiful yeah i just uh, it happens with me like yeah, like like you said that when the eye comes then when i paint it everything just vanishes but when you're in the zone so it's totally different i i i don't have any uh recognition of my name that's why i don't sign my paintings to be honest <laughs> i just don't feel that if my name is you know it, it does not fit there in the painting no but that means you didn't do it that's what it yeah, means. Yeah, the the yeah. Tibetans only sign the back, not the front. Yes, yes. You sign the back. Yeah. Well, I'll look forward to showing you some of my mandalas. There's a couple in here that I'm working on now. By the way, can you see this Ganesh? Yeah. This is something I've been doing. I started doing it for myself, and now I mean doing it for other people. I'm on my, this is my third one, and I've got two more ordered. I'm putting 3,000 crystals on here. I've started here with putting crystals all across this thing. And I use crystals because if you put your paintings up in the wall and they have crystals on them, they fill the whole room with light. Thousands, if not millions of little beams of light go out of the room in the mandalas. Move that. Can you see this is a print? This is a print that somebody ordered online. I'm making it's going to, back to the East Coast. But if you look, can you see all the crystals on it? Yeah. Yes. Amazing it is. Yeah. So when you put this up, when you put this up on a wall and there's light on it, then millions of beams of light come out from the painting. It's like uh People can get healed just being in the presence in a room with a mandala up there. And I thought I figured this out on my own in the early 80s. And then I went to a Tibetan uh, art show of paintings from like the fourth or fifth or sixth centuries. And some of them had little crystals on it and they had 3D puff paint on it. So this is also hand painted. Yeah, the original is hand painted. Hand -painted. The original is hand painted. This is just a print. But even on the print, we put lots of crystals because it, it changes the consciousness of the room. Look at that beautiful one. Oh, wow. Oh, this is so great to connect with you on this level. I was, I was like, um, I painted this for a client and um, I, I was not sure what I'm going to paint. So I just started and I ended up making this. I was, I was Beautiful. <laughs> that's what I call I a have a request. That's what I call I, a personal mandala. I have a request. Yes. Can you someday teach us to make the Shri Chakra? The what chakra? Shri Chakra. Shri, I mean the Shri Yantra. Shri Yantra, yes. You, I've got one here in my hand. Oh. <laughs> See, I knew, That's before magic. You, no, before you said it, I grabbed it because I knew you were going to say it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my wow. God. This Beautiful. is amazing. Wow. All, all painted during COVID. Amazing. Those triangles are pretty confusing. I need to learn how to make those triangles in the middle. I can certainly teach you that very easy. I'm doing um, 
Lorna, will you grab that one there? Here's another, another order I have. Again, this is a print of an original, but this is another Sri Antor. I use very earthy colors, almost like Indian colors, right? And it's got but crystals. I'm in India, these are the colors I see, you know. This is a Sri Yantra, and there's 42 triangles. All the ones pointing down are the female, the female point down. The word Eve has the V pointing down, and Adam has the A's pointing up. So the triangles pointing up are the masculine, the triangles pointing down are the feminine, and this is the Bindi or Bindu, depending on what language, the Bindi, and that's the place where the invisible becomes visible. Everything you see in the manifest plane comes through this point, the Bindi point. In the, in the West, we say the whole universe came from the size of a pea. So that's what, kind of what this represents. And one of these out here is masculine and one of these is feminine. And these are the four gates into her temple. The female always includes the masculine. It's inclusive. The masculine is exclusive. Think how many, over the years, how men have kept women in boxes. That's the typical masculine is control. And the feminine is about including everybody. If females ran the world, there'd be no hungry children. Right, war, war would stop tomorrow. Anyway, so I've done, I'm gonna say probably 40 Sri Yantras, you know, probably at least 40. There's another one down there, Lorna, in those little ones down there. If you were Can in you my- Can you please show me that mandala uh, behind you? It's white and red uh, behind the Sri Yantra you just kept. Uh, another, there's a white and- another, This is another print that I'm working on right now for somebody. That's a beautiful painting, by the way, in there. I love the eye. Oh, thank you're you. Really, you're really exploring the depth of your soul. So here's another Sri Yantra. I'm doing these all the time. Very nice. The house I'm going to teach at in Sedona when it's finished remodeled, it has a 10 foot by 10 foot carved Sri Yantra for the two entry doors. It's spectacular. I don't know how much it costs, but it costs a heck of a lot of money, that's for sure. But mm -hmm. the Sri Yantra is big for me. I do it a lot. And when I'm, you know, working for Deepak Chopra, uh -huh. which I'm not sure what the future holds as far as that goes, but I've been doing it for over 20 years. And the Sri Yantra is one of the paintings that sells the most. People really love it. So easy to make in my class. <laughs> Okay, it looks like we're getting close to beginning. You know, would you like to say anything else, Rihanna? Let's see your painting. Let's see your painting, Rihanna. Let's see what you did. Uh, I'm still coloring and I'm gonna add the waves later. Okay. But yeah, I chose pink and red. That's fine. What I like about it is you're not, you're not hurting it or you're not rushing it. Mm -hmm. And you're slowly opening up at your age, you should slowly open up. You can't rush. You can't grow up too fast. You have to take your time. So I'm glad to see you're doing that with your painting. Thank you. Um, yeah, a quick question. Are we for like the outlines? Should we use a dark outline, like a marker or something? Or Well, I use a, a, a pen or a roller pen, a rollerball pen. Get one of those out, Lorna. They're in the green bag. A roller pen, because to teach, you have to be able to see it. If I was doing this in pencil, you couldn't see it. But when you use the, the line, you call it pin lining. These roller pens are really great. This is a gold. They, they make gold, black, white. White looks great if you use dark paper. And these are fantastic for mandalas. And uh, you can get colors in these, too. They're made in Japan. They even have Japanese writing on them. And they're very inexpensive. Okay, thank you. So the lines are important to learn. You know, after you've learned, you could do a mandala with no lines. But for now, lines is how we see the painting. Okay, thank you. Yeah, um, I think... Can I, I show to... my mandala for a minute, please? Okay, sure. All right. I don't know where you can see it well. It's a little bit dark. Tilt it back so we can get some light on it. That's it, tilt it back a little bit. 
Beautiful. It's a very good start. Is that your first one you've ever done? The very first I've ever done. Beautiful. You're going to have to put this on your refrigerator or frame it. Thank you. Thanks. Um, so I have a um, closing, and then I think Ms. Um, Kamran will lead a closing chant. But okay. thank you. I'm sure everyone here will agree that today's session is almost magical. I feel very fulfilled after learning about all the coloring techniques I learned today and the importance of how they help us open up our hearts. And I feel like my mandala is only talking to me now. So thank you so much, Paul. Um, does anyone here want to share their art? I'd like to share one word. You, you said almost magical. Drop the almost. <laughs> Oh, it is magical, yes. yes. It is magical. It is magical. Can I show mine? Yes. Yes. Whose is that, that orange one with the blue around it? Me, Anuja. Oh, yeah, look at that. Oh, man. You're good. You want a job? <laughs> <laughs> I always have artist jobs. I've always had artists working for me. It's the way they do it in the in Asia. Yeah, I would I would love to learn painting when I was a small child. Right. So this is how you begin. You begin by coloring in and making these. You did an excellent job. You followed the instructions perfect. But I feel it's too dark. I should have used lighter colors, is it? Nope. Nope. Don't say that. That's the mind making this is better and this is not better. We don't want to have the mind judge. No child should ever get a grade on their art. Every piece of okay. art is revealing. Right now you're doing dark because you, you're going deeper. Dark means deeper. So um, don't second so guess it. Allow the, allow the painting to come out naturally. All right. I, I, I just feel mine is so incomplete. Somehow Are I you kidding that me? That's, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. And were, you, were you at in your stage of life Soft and subtle is the way to go. You, you, you're, you're very good at coloring in. It's excellent. This, this piece you should frame when you're finished. But it's I a feel it's, it's a frameable piece. There is, I feel there are missing gaps here. I need to do something more in it. Yes, you are missing gaps, but we're only on session four. We have two more sessions to fill in the gaps. Hello. Okay. Thank Paul, you. Paul, I, I had a question, Paul. When these lines that we made in between, you know, these cuts, yeah. Yeah. when do we actually rub them? Because I didn't rub them off. Like, I didn't do that. Well, so, be, because this is a learning piece, we just left them there to keep guiding us. But okay. you, you can get a good eraser if you want. But I, I would tend to just leave them there. Because if you want to go back and see what you've done, those marks tell you how you've done it. And it doesn't make the piece any less beautiful. They have marks there. The one that I'm doing, I will frame and put this up in my house somewhere. Just because it reminds me, uh, uh, each one of these mandalas has captured the time and space that we've traveled through. It holds not only your consciousness, but our collective consciousness in it. And it's a mystery. So when you're looking at it, tr try not to judge or compare like too light, too dark, I mean, you can say like it has gaps because we're going to fill it in. We're not done yet. So once it's done, we'll, we'll cover the gaps. Yeah. They're beautiful. I'm very impressed. I'm also very impressed. All the paintings are beautiful. All right, Rihanna, you got to do some homework between now and next week. You got to get caught up with the rest of us. <laughs> yeah, I, I will. I'll definitely um, look back at today's session. I Turn your phone off and do mandala coloring, okay? Okay, thank you. Okay, I'll talk um, to you all next week. Yeah. Uh, one more thing. Um, yeah. I just want to say thank you for sharing your art and being here with us. And I'm also super excited to share that our winner today is uh, for the giveaway is our youngest and one of our most enthusiastic participants, uh, Tahira. Um, I think she left now, but congratulations to her. Um, we'll send her notes separately.
to see what she wants. It's probably past her bedtime. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I think there it's morning. Well, but... it's morning over there, but it's yeah. late at night here. Yeah. Um, please stay with us for a closing chant that Mrs. Cameron will lead. And have a wonderful day. Thank you, Rihanna. Thank you, Paul, for opening our hearts and connecting our energy and helping us connect our energy with the divine. So grounding ourselves again and thanking each one of us for the positive collective energy that each one of you brought here today. Chanting Om Shanti 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 Om. Thanking yourself and each one of you. Have a wonderful day and thank you for being here today. Namaste. Thank you, everyone. Namaste. Thank you. Bye-bye.